I uh, am Jake Porway. I am, uh, thanks to Harlan, a data researcher. And I was originally going to talk to you guys about uh, matrix completion via convex optimization. But um, I thought, you know, let's talk about something that I like a little more, superheroes. Yeah, so superheroes, I love superheroes because they're ordinary people who have extraordinary powers that allow them to do amazing things to change the world. And I find that story so compelling that I wanted to share with you guys some stories about some of my favorite superheroes. So first up is uh, Spider-Man. We all know Spider-Man. Mild-mannered Peter Parker gets bitten by a radioactive spider, which gives him super strength, the ability to climb buildings, and he uses those skills to fight crime and clean up the city. So awesome, so inspiring. And of course, we all know Batman. This guy didn't even have any superpowers. He just had awesome toys. So long before the iPhone, this guy had grappling hooks and batarangs that he was using to fight bad guys and help out Gotham City. How awesome is that? That's great. And of course, of course, we all know Tom Levine. An ergonomics expert, yeah, an ergonomics expert. He used his skills to help youth in Chicago, root out poverty in South Africa, and clean up the environment of the entire US. Pretty awesome. But I heard a couple people laughing, a few confused faces, so I'm guessing you don't necessarily know this origin story. So let me start at the beginning of the series. Back around the 20th century, a strange and mysterious force visited mankind. They called it big data. And it promised to unravel the mysteries of the planet, of the universe, if those could just unlock its riddles. People clamored to understand this artifact, and a few, the data scientists, statisticians, analysts, were able to bend data to their will. They were showered with accolades. They created great tools like Facebook, Netflix, and Amazon off of this data that we all use every day, and they helped make society better. So awesome. But unfortunately, there weren't enough to go around. And there were lots of other people, average people, small companies, organizations that couldn't turn the data to their will. And they sat in amongst a flood of government data, of programmatic data, of social data, data they could be using to make the world better, but they just didn't have the skills. So it was a sad state of affairs, but thankfully, alliances formed. There are a few visionary nonprofits and organizations who teamed up with data scientists in their spare time to start doing amazing things for the world. They said, let's use our powers for good. It's an incredibly exciting story, and we at DataKind collect these stories. We're a nonprofit started by Drew Conway, Craig Borowski, and myself, and supported by a lot of people uh, in this room, that brings data scientists together with social causes in ways that just so we can support people who are trying to use their skills to do more with data. It's incredibly exciting to me to see these things happening, and so I wanted to share with you guys some stories about some of these types of superheroes that I really like. There's a group called the Microfinance Information Exchange. They're like the Bloomberg for microfinance. And they have an office here in New York. And they said, you know, we would love to help improve uh, microfinance lending. And there's all this data out there. African banks are putting up all this data online. But we don't really know how to get at it. We don't really know how to use it. So where do we go from here? Well, thankfully, they teamed up with Tom Levine, who knew his skills of working with Scraper Wiki and working with data, that he could scrape that data down. They collected that data, they got more information about these lenders, and they built this. This is a South Africa map of financial inclusion, which now enables them to figure out which microfinance services can best uh, support people in different areas. And they're helping people build off of this data, because you can actually now download all this data that they've scraped and collected. So pretty amazing. Tom using his skills to help them do something great. Of course, many people may know the UN Global Pulse right here in New York. These guys collect data from around the world to help understand the state of humanity. They did a great thing called the Global Wellbeing Survey. They asked people from all around the world to respond by cell phone how happy they are. It was a really great feat for mobile technology, but it resulted in data like this, just a big old spreadsheet. And they said, look, we don't necessarily know what to do with this. Can we do something more? So they teamed up with Adam Lycano, who you heard from earlier, Anna Smith, Paul Butler, and they put together this as a screenshot of a video that shows where people responded to this survey over time, something the UN didn't even know at the time. And this was not only just cool for what it was, it was so important to the UN that they presented it at the UN General Assembly to say, this is how we have to think about data in the future. And lastly, I want to talk about just last weekend. We held an event where the New York City Parks Department with the New York City Information Technology and Telecommunications Program came together and said, can we use the data we have to help us understand the urban forest, all the trees in the city in which we live every day? They came with questions about where the species are heading. They wanted to know if one of their pruning programs was working. And they also wanted to find out where are the areas that are most at risk by storms. By the end of the weekend, they had answers to all of those, including this, an interactive tool that allows them to zoom in and see their tree inventory. So that for the first time ever, they can start to look in real time uh, and actually interact with the tree population in New York. 
This is really cool and you should check this out. This was also done by people like Adam Lycano, uh, a guy named Andrew Hill at Visuality, Brian D'Alessandro from Media Six Degrees, and Kathy O'Neill from Math Babe. So amazing group of people working on these projects. So this is incredibly exciting to us. Uh, and what's more exciting than just seeing these maps and graphs that I put up because they're easy to show is that organizations working with data scientists are starting to change the way they think about data science. They're actually hiring data scientists, thinking about their practice in general, about how they can use data to do better things. And the really cool thing about this is that you guys, you're all superheroes. Not, not me on stage, not data kind, but you guys all have the same skills that the people who built these things have. And you realize, should realize that you have extraordinary powers that ordinary people don't have. And you don't necessarily just have to turn to data kind. There's tons of people in the city doing this. There's Scraper Wiki, Code for America, Random Hacks of Kindness. More, and we just heard from Cusp earlier as well. So there are more opportunities than ever to get involved in using your skills for good. So as we embark on this data revolution, I just want to ask out there to all of you, uh, if we, as we look at this, what will our origin stories be? You know, everyone needs their call to action. I hope that as this data revolution continues, we take the, uh, play the role of the good guys. Good guys like Tom Levine, who's back up there too. So thank you very much.